Hey, I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, we're gonna to build this dresser. Start to finish, using plywood and one bys, ball bearing, full extension drawer slides. It's a pretty good build, check it out. First thing I want to do is build uh, my own legs, but you can buy two by twos, two by two if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to use this two by six, and I'm going to cut it down to inch and a half by inch and a half, and uh, make my own legs. I'm going to need four of them. Uh, this dresser is going to be 38 inches tall. Uh, I want a three quarter inch top, so I'm going to make my legs 37 and a quarter, and uh, I'm going to try maybe to do a taper on the end. I have to see if I can do that. Not sure. All right, so I want a taper on the bottom of my legs. So what I've done is I've set my miter saw up at 16 degrees. I've got a stop block. What I do is cut once, turn to the right, cut once again. And what that does, it gives me a two-sided taper on the leg. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I wanted a little something extra on the bottom, so that's what I'm doing. All right, I said turn to the right, I meant turn to the left. And so if you've got your block on here, this is square. I made sure that my stop block is ex uh, exactly square. And I just set it up to where I would cut uh, two inches off the top. And so I line it up square and I just hold it. It's up against that fence. It's up against this block. I cut, then I rotate it once to the left. Make sure everything's nice and square and then cut again. And then that gives me my two-sided, my two-sided taper like this. Now what that winds up being is a half inch from the edge and two inches from the top. So a half inch off this edge and two inches from the bottom up. So that's how I did my tapers. I'm not sure if that's uh not sure if that's a technical way you can do it. You can build a jig, certainly, to do it on the table saw. I just thought that'd be faster, so that's how I did it. One thing I didn't show on video, I went ahead and cut a little rabbit. Or dado, I don't know what you call it. I cut a groove out of the back of this leg. What that's for is when the leg is on the back, I'll be able to put that quarter inch plywood on the back and have it inset. So it's just inset a quarter of an inch. So I took a quarter uh, inch off of the uh, back of each uh, back leg. All right, so what we got going on, I've got my sides built. Uh, I went ahead and ripped down two or four of these two inch wide one bys. This was a one by six. I just ripped it down in two inch strips, 56 inches long. So I've got four of them at 56 inches. And I've got this, if, if, if this is our dresser, it's laying face down. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach these. And how I'm gonna do that is with pocket holes. I went ahead and drilled pocket hole screws in, you saw. Uh, inch and a quarter pocket hole screws, wood glue. I'm going to put one on the front side at the top, one at the back side at the top, and then again on the bottom, front side, bottom, back side. And then we'll have a basic frame at that point, and we can start adding to that. I just wanted to show you what I'm doing so that you'll understand what's going on. And the one on the back side, 
I'm going to inset it a quarter of an inch so that the uh, quarter inch plywood will actually sit on top of it. Uh, so it'll it'll actually go just flush with the with your rabbit if you've done the rabbit on the back. Is it a rabbit? I think so. Anyway, so that's what we're doing. I've got some five foot clamps we're going to use to hold everything together. If you don't have any of those, just hold everything nice and snug and, and screw it down easy so that nothing walks. Your main thing you want to do is you want everything on the top to be flush. All these pieces coming together needs to be flush. On the bottom side, I measured up two inches. I just used my combination square, measured up two inches and made a mark. So I've got two inches on off the bottom of the foot up and that's where the bottom of my bottom stretcher will go. All right, so now I've got to start uh, installing all my dividers. And the way I'm going to do that is I know that I want three sets of drawers. I want to set on top, one in the middle, one on the bottom. So I'm going to divide this into three equal parts. I know that the dividers between the drawers are three quarters of an inch. So I need to take that in consideration. There's going to be two of those. So that's an inch and a half. So I'll take that off. This 31 and the eighth inches is what I've got as an opening. So I think it's gonna be about nine and nine inches and some odd five, eight, seven, eight, something like that when I figure it up. And then we'll divide those into equal parts. Put those dividers in there. Remember, cut two of everything because you gotta have one on the front side, one on the back. And then there'll be a couple of risers there as well. Now remember when you put your legs on, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, make sure the angle is, you want your, the, the taper, if you've tapered your legs, the taper will be on the side and the front, but the outside corner is the actual 90 degree corner. So you can just remember that the outside corner is a 90 degree corner on the front and the back. Everything will look uniform. Everything's looking good. I'm liking how it's looking so far. So this is the back. I've done the exact same thing on the back as I did the front. I brought my spacers over. Uh, if you're going to build something like this, it's a good idea to go ahead, go ahead and cut these spacers so that everything fits perfect every time. So that's what I did. I went ahead and I laid these spacers in here and then I put my pieces, the uprights here. They align perfectly with the ones up front. Same thing with this one here. Measured here to make sure everything was perfectly centered. Now I'm gonna put some stretchers in here so that my drawer slides have something to attach to. Once I do that, then I'll put the back on. I'm not uh, that big a hurry to put this back on. Everything's nice and sturdy right now, so uh, it's a pretty good design, I think. Uh, just kind of winging it. I'm kind of winging it as I went, and uh, it's working out pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some stretchers here for my drawer slides. Maybe a two or three inch strip of plywood or one by or something. Uh, probably the one by everything will match up. Maybe the, I don't know, depends on how much uh, plywood I have left. Uh, so I'm gonna need one, two, three, four stretchers. Uh, they'll all be the, the same length and uh, we'll get all this tied in. I got it laying face down. I've cut my four inch plywood size. And so I'm just gonna flush it up on the top, make sure it's inset on each side. It's a dry fit. I'm gonna put glue in there and then we're gonna brad nail this on. This will make it structurally sound as far as racking one way or the other, which it's not even doing, but this will actually help it even more. So I'm just gonna brad nail it on this bottom stretcher, the top stretcher, and 
a couple times in the middle, uh, those stretchers there. So. Now it's time to make some drawers for our frame, and we're just going to start out with a basic drawer. Uh, this is a, a replica of Fix This, Build That, Brad, in his channel. Go check him out. I'll put a link in the description to his uh, video about building drawers, but I'm going to show you how I do it. It's the same way. We got pocket hole construction drawers. It's just plywood. This is three-quarter inch plywood, the same type of plywood we built the sides out of. My camera's fogging up. If you're building one just like this, I'm gonna give you the measurements on it. So the total width of the drawer is gonna be 26 and a half inches wide. This long piece. So both the front and the back will have the pocket holes drilled in it. The front and back pieces are 25 and an eighth inches wide. And the side pieces are, for, for this build that I'm building, 16 and a half inches wide. And then the front and back, or the side pieces, go flush over the front and back. And then you'll pocket hole into that. On the bottom, we have a quarter inch plywood. And the way I do that is uh, I measure up one quarter of an inch, or I actually set my table saw at one quarter of an inch from the bottom, make a pass, and then I move it up another eighth inch, make another pass on all pieces except the very back piece. So this, so if this is the front, we'll put our false, false drawer front on the front of this once it's complete. But on the back, you see the back piece is shorter. The back piece is shorter, and then we just screw it in so that we can replace this if needed. So we can unscrew this and pull this out if it ever gets broken for any reason. I don't expect it to, but it's possible. So the, the total width of this piece, eight and seven eighths inches. And then what that does, it just comes to the, to the top of that groove. And then when we're putting this together, we're gonna flush this uh, groove up with the bottom of this drawer and make sure this groove that we've cut into these three pieces are all lined up so that this slides in nice and smooth. And what I'll do is I'll put this piece on first. After the grooves are cut, we'll put this on. We'll attach both of these side pieces to this piece, slide this drawer bottom in, and then attach the back piece and put screws under there. And then you have a, a basic drawer. So that's what we're gonna do. I've got all these already cut out. I've already pocket hole screwed all this. So now I'm gonna put my grooves in there. The groove will go on the back side of the pocket holes, the opposite side of the pocket holes, and then on one side of each of the, eight of the uh, sides. And what I forgot to mention is, I set the table saw, uh, I'll use my combination square, and I'll set the depth of this blade at a quarter of an inch. So we're cutting a quarter inch into the bottom of the drawer, and then away from the bottom, we'll do a quarter, quarter inch from the bottom and a quarter inch in, is basically what we're doing. I've got a quarter inch plywood. I've cut it 16 and 1 8 inches by 25 and a half inches. That's with this quarter inch inset or this quarter inch groove all the way around. Uh, you just select whichever side you want to face up. I, don't know, I guess it matters a whole lot uh, if you buy the right sanded plywood. And then I'm just going to slide it in the groove. I'm not gluing this or anything. 
kind of lines up with that groove, tap it in. Should be flush on the back. And then once that's flush, just gotta take my drill with the countersink bit. And I just got three quarter inch screws. Turn your uh, driver down so it's not overdriving those screws. You're just snugging them up. You're just gonna snug them up. And there you have it. So if this ever breaks or busts for any reason on the bottom, I, I don't know, maybe you overloaded the drawer and it breaks. Uh, but you could you take those four screws out and you slide this panel out and put you a new one in. Uh, I think that I like that a little bit better. The previous drawers I made, I, I cut the same groove all the way around on the back and then just fit it all together. And then that makes it, you'd have to build a new drawer to uh, replace that bottom. I like this method better. Uh, of course, it's from Fix This, Build That. He, he come up with this method, I assume, and that's the one he uses and I like it. So that's what I'm using. So now all we gotta do is put a false drawer front on this after they're installed. This is one drawer down. I've got about uh, six or seven more to go. So that's what we're fixing to do now. When putting these drawers together like this, the most important thing is that this groove lines up in the inside. If it don't, when you slide this plywood in, it's not going to go into that groove. You're, it's going to it's going to be off, and it'll wind up busting your plywood, especially that quarter end. So what I like to do is <clears throat> I put a piece here and clamp it, and then I just put a piece back here to keep the back side from moving. I've glued this already. Make sure this is flush and then double check that notch for that groove and make sure that they're lining up perfectly. If they're off for any reason, you need to adjust that. And once you get it, I clamp it pretty snug. I mean, I'm not bearing down on it, but I want it to be snug. And then from the other side, I'll put a pocket hole screw up. I put the first one up. Uh, putting them up, if you build them upside down, it makes it easier because you, you'll be able to see that groove more. If you build it the other way, the groove's down here and it's hard to see. So I go ahead and just, uh, Put this first pocket hole in, pocket hole screw. Once that's snug, I double check, make sure everything's still lined up, and then I can continue on. I usually put the bottom one in there, rather it'd be the top, and then the, do the exact same thing on this other side. I first check for flush, it does feel a little bit off. Feels a little off right there. So I'll go ahead and check it. And it is in fact off, take a rubber mallet. Now when you hit this, don't just slam it, because if you hit too hard right there, it'll actually break that little piece off. All right, now that everything's flush, mainly that groove is in there, we'll screw the other side, move on. I try to keep the dust and trash debris off the table, that way nothing gets moved or there's not something under there, it makes everything kind of go off kilter. But I'm using Type Bond 3, you can use 2, uh, Gorilla Wood Glue, uh, whatever you want. So I just kind of put it in place. Uh, pretty close. This is an Irwin 36 inch clamp. Uh, all these tools and supplies, I'll put a link in the description for you. Just a light snug at first. Rubber mallet. Get everything flushed up on this outside. Now back here, so this is the back of the box, and back here you need to make sure that this thing is not poking up into that groove right there so that this, this the bottom of the drawer, is actually flush with the top of the groove. So, or the bottom of the back piece is flush with the top of this groove. Once it is, go ahead and clamp that tight. So I ripped that plywood and now I'm gonna slide it in. If everything's lined up, it should work just fine. Plywood's a little warped, so sometimes you may have to push up from underneath or whatever it needs adjusting there until it fits in that groove. Once you get a snap in there, I just take a little rubber mallet and tap it in place. It doesn't take a whole lot. All right, so I want to dress up the ends of this dresser. Blah, blah, 
blah, blah, blah. I want to dress up the ends of this dresser. I don't want it to just be plain with the top on it like that. I think it needs a little something more. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, two pieces up here. One here, they're, they're both two inches to match this two inch piece. So it kind of carry that, it'll match this two inch piece. So to carry that look on around, it should inset in there uh, flush. And then one on the bottom. And then we'll put some uh, cold molding on the inside of that and it'll dress it up, make it look a little nicer than just the plain edge there. Uh, like I said, these are 15 inches and I'm just gonna glue and brad nail those into place and then we'll work on the cold molding. Cold molding, cold molding. Okay, so now we're gonna put this cold molding, like a cove, cove molding. I can't say that in my southern accent. So it's just a it's just a cove, it's a kind of an indention. Instead of a quarter round, it goes the other way. I've cut 45s on both ends. I'm gonna take this and uh, lay it in the bottom. And and what the how I did that was I cut a 45 on this end, I just set my miter at 45, cut one end, marked it, and then just cut it a little long and then just kept trimming just a little at a time until it fits nice and snug. Uh, once I get all pieces cut and everything fits nice, I will glue and brad nail that in. And so I went ahead and cut a 45 on this end as well. And then I'll lay this up there and mark the long side in the direction of the 45. That way this, if I cut another piece identical to this one, it'll just flip over and be right up there. I should, should be able to cut two identical pieces here and here and here and here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this out and we'll see how they fit. 45, I got my mark. I'm gonna cut it about an eighth inch long. See my mark, I cut it long, just so I can sneak up on that cut. If you don't, you'll wind up cutting it too short unless you're just an awesome carpenter, which I am not. All right, so before anything's glued or screwed, you can see that it's not quite pushed tight there, but that's okay, I hadn't done anything yet. Just wanna show you, this is what you're looking for. Nice, tight, mitered corners. The first couple of times I did this, I did not get that. I had a little bit of gap. I used a little wood putty, wood filler, whatever, it was fine. But just a general idea of what the end will look like, that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other end so that uh, I have reference pieces. I'll use these as reference and, and cut them just a little long on the other end and then I can trim them to fit down there. Uh, it's just a little easier to do it that way. But I'm gonna putty these holes before I paint and sand it. And then whatever brad nail holes are in these, I will putty those as well. What's the heat index? 109. If you can't tell, it's hot in Arkansas. It's 109 degree heat index. I don't have air conditioning and I sweat. So that's what we got to deal with. You saw me put in a couple of these drawers. The way I'm doing it is extremely simple. I got two pieces of quarter inch plywood, two strips of my three quarter inch plywood. What I'm doing with the three quarters, I lay that down. I've got my full extension drawer slides. What I do is I just, I'm using these as spacers. And I just, so whatever you're using for spacer, you can do the same thing. Uh, that's what you're looking for, consistency. So I have this on there. I have another three quarter inch plywood block that I'm using just as, as a spacer because that's what my drawer front is going to be is three quarter inch plywood. And so I, I flush this up. Once I get this flush, I just hold this to the back of it. And then I'll take my hand, drop my block. I'll move this out. I'll put a screw in here in the slotted hole that lets it move forward. Uh, one back here, one in the middle, do the same thing on the other side. And then I insert my drawer into the frame. This is where the quarter inch plywood comes in because I set the quarter inch plywood down, set the drawer on top of it. 
so that you're creating a gap. And then I, I, I'll, you see me, I'll pull it out just a little bit, put a screw on each side. I use a block of wood to make sure that those drawer slides are flush so they're not sticking past and it will obstruct my false drawer front. I'll put a screw in here, I'll pull it out, put a second one in, and then I'll take the drawer off that, put the third one in the back. That's all there is to it. Very simple. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of these. So now I'm gonna make the top for this dresser. What I've done is I went ahead and cut that out. I didn't show it on video, but I just cut this piece out from a top, a dresser top. And then I cut two inch strips of one by. And just depending on how thick your three quarter inch plywood actually is, cause it's not actually a true three quarters of an inch. I had to actually run this through the planer uh, just to knock, man, maybe a 64th off of it so that it's nice and flush. Uh, without that, it was just a tiny bit thicker and it just caused a little more problems. But this is upside down. So what I've done, I've went ahead and drilled some pocket holes and then I've, I've got, went ahead and cut miters, 45 degree miters on each side. I'm gonna line those up, pocket hole drill those in with glue. And what that's gonna do is gonna hide that plywood edge so it doesn't look like a plywood top. But it's gonna look nice. So let's do that now. All right, so I sanded that down to 120. Uh, you saw me put that beveled edge or an angle, 45 degree angle on the bottom side. If you're gonna do that, <clears throat> I'll give you a tip. Do it before you put those boards on that plywood, make it a lot easier on yourself. Or if you have a 45 degree chamfer bit for your router, that'd be the way to go. So I went ahead and cut out the drawer faces for my dresser, just out of the three quarter inch plywood. Uh, what I did was I measured the opening and then I took off an eighth off of each side all four sides so eighth off this end eighth off that end that's a quarter eighth off the top eighth off the bottom that's another quarter and then i what i'm going to do is use edge banding veneer edging it looks like this on road it looks like this it's got a sticky glue side you use a common household iron and you just glue it to the edges uh, so with if i take two pieces of this and put them together flat it's just over a sixteenth of an inch so <clears throat> put them on both sides i added another sixteenth or i took off another sixteenth off each end so essentially i took off five sixteenths off the, off of the opening size so the opening was actually nine and seven eighths inches uh, so this is actually nine and nine sixteenths of an inch <clears throat> so i'm gonna go ahead and put the edge banding on uh, this stuff is is kind of uh a pain to use 
but it's what I got and it's what I'm going to use. Uh, what you do is you just lay it on there. You flush up one side of it. Uh, the other side, because it's made for three quarter inch, and this is actually not quite three quarters of an inch, I'll take something and trim that edge. But starting out, you just use a hot iron. When it gets hot, you'll just take it and just iron it on all the way down. Once you have it heated up to where it's all sticky, you take something and, and just press on it so that it, it matches the glue down on there. And it does stick pretty good. It just hides that plywood edge and, and hopefully just give it a more finished look. Uh, not a whole lot of tricks to this. Uh, you can search how to put on edge banding. Uh, basically it's going to show you the same thing. Iron it on, take something round. Doesn't matter what, do something round and roll it or press it into the, the wood. That's one down. I've only got six more to go. So it takes a little time, but you can tell it hides the plywood edge. This is the edge banded version versus the non edge banded version. So it just gives it a little more finished look. Now what I have to deal with now is if you can see that there's a tiny little lip right there that I'm gonna have to trim off. I've got a flush trim bit. I'm gonna try that and see if that works. If it does great, if not, you can take a, a utility knife and just kind of trim that or a hand plane if you have that. So it should trim off pretty easy. I tried to flush it up on the front side so that I would only, I would only have to trim it on one side. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and do these six. Not gonna video that and bore you with that. So today, paint day. First thing we're gonna do is put some primer on there. I'm gonna use this Sherwin-Williams quick dry stain blocking primer. Uh, I'm put about two coats on there if I can get there, uh, if I have enough primer. I'll try to get two coats, at least two. Uh, after that, we're gonna use uh, Benjamin Moore Advance in a dove white or white dove color. Um, the reason I'm using the, the Benjamin Moore is one, I've got it. We used it on our cabinets. It's a nice self-leveling paint and it dries extremely hard and it has been extremely durable on our cabinets. So if that's the case for the cabinets, it'll last a good long time on the dresser as well. So that's why I'm using that paint. Use whatever paint you want. Stain it, whatever you want to do. So, but before I paint, I uh, realized that I made a mistake. I know that that's not very common for me. Make them all the time. If you'll look and see, I need to prime this first and you'll see something that's there that shouldn't be the drawer slides and so now I've got to take all these drawer slides off the box or the frame I mean and uh, then prime it and then after it's painted I'll put the drawer slides back in place uh, it kind of sucks because I should have thought of that before but I didn't I'm going to go ahead and leave those on the uh, drawer boxes because those aren't getting painted only the drawer faces will get the paint and then I'll attach those. So the drawer boxes, I can leave those, but I have to remove these. So that's what I'm fixing to do is remove those before I prime.
So I got that paint applied. I went ahead and put three coats of that uh, Benjamin Moore advanced paint on there. This stuff is a really good paint. Uh, you're gonna pay for it if you want that stuff. So just be prepared for sticker shock. Uh, I got, I'm gonna let this dry overnight because you're supposed to let it dry eight to 12 hours per coat. I didn't do that, but I did let it dry a couple hours between the coats, but I am gonna let it dry overnight before I put the drawer faces on my drawers because those things will need to be really dry before I mess with it. But I am gonna go ahead and put my drawer slides back in the frame. So that's what we're doing now. I marked those as I come out if you saw me writing on them. Uh, just that way I know where each one goes because I don't know if these things will, if there's any difference in them because when you take them apart, uh, I've marked my drawers so the, the slides on the drawers actually fit into the ones that are were already installed and I don't want any. I don't want to make sure that there's going to be any, uh, I want to make sure they all go back together as a pair or as a set, uh, even if it doesn't matter, I want it to, to work right. So. So I've let everything dry overnight. Now I'm fixing to put the drawer faces on the drawer fronts themselves. To do that, we're using playing cards. If you've watched any dresser builds on YouTube, a lot of people use this method to get the spacing correct. Uh, it's a very simple method. So what you're gonna do is that basically you're just gonna take and put your drawers in. Then you're gonna set your drawer faces in place, stack some cards on the top uh, here until there's no gap here and it's tight here. Take those out, cut them in half, use half card stack here, half that card stack on the bottom. Same thing on the sides, that gets everything nice and even, and uh, it's pretty simple. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the spacing is gonna be about 11 cards on each uh, side, is what I've come up with. So. Just a, a one deck of playing cards, all you're gonna need. Uh, 10 to 11, just depends on how uh, tight you can get it to fit. These are 11 on each one. I'm gonna take a, a clamp, and just reach over and clamp this thing into place while I put a couple of screws in from the back side to secure it. So I'm just gonna use inch and a quarter pocket screws, pocket nose screws, just put a couple three back there. Uh, just to keep everything nice and snug. I just put that card on there with the clamp just to protect the face. Uh, once everything's screwed in, just remove these cards. They should slide out pretty easily. And uh, that should keep us good, even spacing all the way around. I like it. We're going to repeat that process on the rest of the six drawers and uh, then we'll be worried about putting our uh, drawer pulls on. So I got all those drawer faces on, everything's looking good, everything's spaced evenly, which is what I wanted. Though That card trick works very, very well. So now it's time to put the top on. I didn't video this, but I went ahead and put two supports in, one here and uh, one here, that I'm gonna drill from underneath side into the top, from the underneath side into the top uh, with just pocket hole screws. I don't have to worry about wood expansion because I use plywood. If it was a regular wood top, then I would use tabletop fasteners. But since it's plywood, just screw right into that plywood. Again, inch and a quarter screws. And uh, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna put the top on. 
I had to take these drawers out so that I can screw up in there. But other than that, this should be getting close to getting finished. We still got to put our drawer pulls on, but still. Oh, 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 I almost dropped that. I scratched the front of the dresser. That would suck. I'm just going to flush it up on the back side. That's how I wanted this to go. Let me show you something. So if I only attach it using this cross member, these two on the ends, I can see a little gap. So I'm probably going to take my Craig R3 and put a one pocket hole here and one here so that it'll be attached on the ends. I'm afraid this, if I don't, there's going to be a tiny gap there and I want to pull that tight. So I'm going to go ahead and take the top off, put a pocket hole here and here, and also down there using my Craig R3. If you don't know what a Craig R3 is, it's, uh, it's just uh, basically a portable uh, pocket hole jig versus the, or the K5. So I think I'm going to do that. I got the pocket hole drilled one there and one there on each end. Don't drop it. See my tape measure? So I measure an inch and a quarter is what I want overhang because this is the way I designed it. Your overhang can be whatever you would prefer. I'm looking for about an inch and a quarter. I want the back flush. Then I'm just going to take pocket hole screws and attach it uh, through the cross members as well as the pocket holes on each end. We'll start on this corner. Back still flush. You want to make sure both ends are still flush before you screw that one end down. That way if it's walked any. I'm actually going to go ahead and attach this in so that it'll be stay square. Now it's time to put the drawer pulls on. We ordered these off the Amazon. If you're interested in any of the tools or supplies we've used in this build, there will be links to everything in the description below. At any time you can go down there, click on those links and go check those out, such as these drawer pulls, the slides, uh, the sandpaper, etc. All that stuff will be in the description. These are like a crystal clear looking drawer slide. It comes with its own hardware, but these are way too short to be used when you've got two pieces of plywood like these drawers were built. You got the face plus the actual drawer box itself. So I went to my local home store and bought uh, equivalent round, this is the roundness of them, the same size. They'll fit in the drawer slides, but these are inch and three quarters inch long. If you can find the inch and five inch, probably work a little better. But I bought inch and three quarter inch uh, long screws and I've got some washers to take up the rest of the space because these are actually uh, kind of shallow as far as screwing them in. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes for this. What I've done is I measured down halfway of these drawers, which wound up being four and 13, six, four and 13 sixteenths of an inch from the top of the drawer to the middle or from the bottom of the drawer to the middle. So I've got them the middle ways. On these bigger drawers, what I did was I just measured it 27 and 3 8 inches wide on these four and I divided that by three and that gives me nine and eight so nine and eight here nine nine and eight from this side nine and eight from this side and then I've got a nine and eighth inch gap in the middle uh, that way everything's nice and uniform on the top three drawers I went ahead and divided the 17 and 7 eighths in half which gave me eight and 15 sixteenths of an inch to the middle and I marked all of these you probably can't see it from there but all of them have these just very fine pencil marks where i want to drill them now i've got get my drill bit set 
and I've actually went ahead and made a little jig. It's just two pieces of plywood. I made sure this was perfectly square. It's just glued and a couple of brad nails. And then I measure down from the bottom of this piece down four and 13 sixteenths of an inch and then made a mark and drilled a hole in it. So you can see my hole. It's just a very simple jig. And what I'm gonna do is I'll wind up taking this jig and I can look through the hole, find my mark, and then take my drill bit and drill through this piece into this piece out the back. And what that'll do is that'll help me keep it a little more square and I'll know, and then everything will be exactly the same from the top. If I just went and didn't do that, if I just drilled from here, I may have a little bit of one way or the other be off just a little, and I want everything to be uniform. So, and I'll likely just take this and get a small clamp and clamp it like that. Now sand is just smooth so that it's not gonna scuff my drawers or anything like that. But what I will do before I drill anything, I've got a center punch. I'll take my center punch, put it exactly on that mark, and I'll just bump that, just give it a little indentation so that my drill bit will have a little bit of something to get started on. That'll keep your drill bit from walking or anything like that. So when I put this jig on, what I do is, I, 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 these have already drilled, but the ones I made a mark in, I'm lining that up, I'm looking through that hole, I find that mark, and I just set it down on there, and then I'll take my light on my, flat, my flashlight on my phone, or you can use whatever you got, flashlight or whatever, and I look through that hole and make sure that, that the mark is centered with this hole, and if it's center or extremely close to center, you'll be okay. I don't think you'll ever notice if these are out a 32nd or maybe even a 16th. It would be very hard to see. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not building a clock. I'm building a dresser, so it doesn't have to be perfect. You know? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking through there, making sure that's centered up. Once that is, I drill that hole. Now this jig will work on a dresser, uh, maybe two. I wouldn't use it more than that. And the reason is this hole will get watered out wallard that's a southern word wallard it'll get wallered out and you won't be able to use it anymore and so it won't be as accurate so but for these 12 uh drawer pulls that i'm putting on something like this will work fine then i'll just chunk it uh, so just keep that in mind you can buy a craig a drawer slide or a drawer pull jig uh, I, I don't have one and i don't really see the point of spending that money when i don't build a whole lot of these things now, if I built a whole bunch of furniture that required drawer pulls, then I would I'd probably pick one up, but something like this works just as good. I needed an inch and five eighths screws, and my local store had an inch and three quarter and an inch and a half, so I didn't. So I had to pick the longer of the two, and uh, I just bought a box of washers. So. Washers, that's another southern word, washers, washers. And these are just like, these are glass, real glass. They're not plastic drawer pulls. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. We picked them up on Amazon. They look pretty cool. Look good in my daughter's room. Kind of girly looking, if I'm allowed to say that anymore. I'm just taking these from the backside. I uh, make sure to clean that where the, uh, there's a little bit of tear out on there when you drill through like that. Not much, just a little. Just want to clean that off. And then I just take my drill and, or my impact. And I start these by hand because I don't want to get cross-threaded. And once they snug up, and I'm using this impact on a low speed because I don't want to strip the head of the screw either. Because if you've ever stripped the head of one of these and this is tight, it's almost impossible to get that thing off there. Ah, uh, drop on the concrete. That ain't good. It didn't break.
if you've built this you already know this but if you haven't built this and you're planning on building it and you build it like this and you're gonna go put it in place you're gonna have to pull those drawers out to do so because this thing is heavy you're talking three quarter inch plywood drawers three quarter inch size three quarter inch top heavy 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 this thing is a beast so just be prepared for that and i didn't even put a bottom in it some people i've seen that build something similar to this would put a three quarter inch bottom in this thing i don't see a reason for that i think it's a waste of plywood and it's a waste of uh, or added just more weight to the thing so everything is nice and sturdy this is one of the most sturdy pieces i've built i'm very proud of this especially since it's a gift for my daughter uh, so let's put it in a room one thing you know if you ever build your own stuff is that it never comes out perfect and you have to learn to deal with that because you're always going to see the imperfections that most everybody else is not going to see but you think they see anyway so with that said uh, there's a lot of things on here that's not perfect uh, so don't think that if you're building this at home that it has to be perfect and that mine does look perfect because it's not uh, for instance there's a knot hole there that's got a little gap in it that's okay i'm not too concerned about that all of these gaps are pretty close but they're not perfect so if you if you're thinking your gaps around your drawers have to be perfect for it to be a functional piece it doesn't you just don't want them to be hitting hitting and you don't want it to be so obvious that if you if you just glance at it that you see it would i want them to be more perfect uh, yes uh, like this bottom drawer here for some reason when i close it if you don't push push it closed it pops up just a little bit right there it actually sticks out just a little you can't see it unless you're looking down on it but once you push it closed it, it does what it's supposed to do again there's another knot hole maybe i should have filled those with uh, putty or something but i'm not that concerned about it coming around to this edge uh, there was a knot hole right here that uh, is a little rough and then uh, there's some gaps in my quarter round or my cold molding right there that uh, i'm not sure why that is because everything's nice and tight it's just where the paint is uh kind of it didn't see how this bottom has got a nice seal on it and then this one has a little gap on it uh, i guess i could have caulked that with some caulking uh, a really fine line of caulking and then painted it but all in all i think it's turned out well uh, you can see a little gap there underneath just a tiny bit and what that's from is is this piece here isn't exactly perfectly flush with this on the very top where i missed it by maybe a 30 second so it prevents that from coming on down but honestly would you ever see that if i hadn't showed it to you probably not uh, not sitting in a room and not just really inspecting these things so just kind of keep that in mind when you're building your own stuff try not to be too hard on yourself i'm pretty hard on myself so i want everything to look nice i want it to be nice and perfect but truth is we can't get perfect because we're not perfect beings okay so that's what we're going for so i think this turned out really nice i like the drawer pulls my wife picked out for the school in my daughter's room it's, it's a, a gift for her and so i'm happy with it i'm happy with it back on the perfection thing if you'll see the drawer faces where the plywood kind of uh, splintered a little bit when I was cutting it with a saw you can see a little bit of roughness there even though I did sand that I mean you can I mean, you just have to really inspect uh, to see some imperfections there I try to get all this grit that you can feel out of that paint uh, but all in all I mean fairly decent this is what the drawers look like when they open this got a little paint on it overspray but you you could paint these boxes if you wanted to uh, i'm not going to uh, i don't have the paint what i am going to do is take a shop vacuum vacuum those things out before i take everything apart take it inside One of the best things you can do to help support this channel is to click that video right there that helps this channel grow because it keeps my watch time going and i appreciate it 
I give you a virtual fist bump if you click that video. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Check that description down below for the links to the tools and supplies used in this field.